Hello and welcome, this is a video guide on how to optimise and boost the FPS for Forza Horizon 5. Now please note that Forza Horizon is extremely well optimised and is almost technically flawless. So if you're on a high-end system, you probably don't have any issues running Forza on max settings. But I still recommend going through the Windows 10 settings tips on this guide as that will help optimise your system and allow the game to run even better. Obviously that's if you haven't yet optimised your system for gaming. Anyway, this guide will definitely be more effective for the mid-range and low-end gaming systems. The guide will not only show you how to boost the FPS, but it will also improve game quality and system performance. And in turn, this should help fix any lag or FPS drops or stutters that you could be experiencing whilst you play. But first and foremost, we're going to go over the very best tips, tricks and settings for gaming on Windows 10 step by step. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Step 1. Clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This basically cleanses and resets your stored shaders, which are basically tones and textures that your installed games save. Every time there's a new update, more are added on. Shader compiling can cause crashes, stutters, freezes, and even overheating in some cases. It uses extra memory too. Resetting your shader cache should always be the first thing you do before installing a new game. Or when a new update comes along. Now there's a link in the description for a video that will show you two simple ways on how to easily clean and reset your shader cache. Step 2. To ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuner, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low-end games gaming systems that need all the power they can get, basically. To turn the Steam overlay off, just head into the Steam setting menu, click in-game and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in-game. To turn off the NVIDIA GeForce overlay, open up NVIDIA GeForce Experience, click on the settings icon, go to general and switch off the in-game overlay. For Xbox Game Bar, using the Windows search bar, type Game Mode Settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar. And of course, set it to off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on Captures, where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open Settings and on the left select Overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says Enable In-Game Overlay. After you've done that, navigate to Advanced and make sure Hardware Acceleration is set to Off as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step 3. In the Windows search bar, type in Game Mode and click the settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure Game Mode is set to On. For quite some time, there were issues with this particular setting, but Microsoft has now finally fixed it. So basically, if you're running the very latest version of Windows 10, make sure you turn Game Mode On. This will force all your PC resources on the game you're playing and suppresses any background activity from affecting your system while you game. Step number four. Navigate back to Windows search bar, type in graphics settings and click the icon. Now in here you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This needs to be set to on and if it wasn't you will need to restart your PC after you turn it on. Once that's all done and out the way navigate down to graphics performance preference and you'll want to add Forza Horizon 5 to your graphics performance list. Now with any Microsoft Store game Games, all you need to do is under choose an app to set preference change it from desktop app to Microsoft Store app and a new drop down box will appear. All you then need to do is click that drop down box and select the application you want which in this particular case would be Forza Horizon 5 and you then just add that to your games list. Then finally all you need to do is click on options set it to high performance click save and then you're done. Step 5. Go back to the Windows search bar once again, type in Power Plan and click Edit Power Plan. At the very top, click 
power options and under preferred plans ensure high performance is selected. Step 6. If you have multiple screens, I would advise to only have one screen on when you play. If you press the Windows key and P together, you will bring up a menu that lets you select which screens to have on. Step 7. Background apps. Simply type settings into Windows search bar and click the icon. Then select privacy. On the left menu, scroll down all the way until you see background apps. Then simply switch off let apps run in the background. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the game and we're going to change a couple of things. As well as pretty much any other game, we can just put everything on low and that would be fine. You'll get smooth performance, but the visual quality would just be very poor. But the whole point is to try and maintain as high a graphical quality as we can whilst squeezing the very most amount of FPS. So that's exactly what we aim to try and do with this particular guide. Firstly, under options, head into the video settings. HDR should show off unless you have a HDR compatible monitor. Resolution should be your native resolution. My monitor is 1440p, so I set mine to 2560 by 1440p. Frame rate should be set to your monitor's highest refresh rate. Mine is 165Hz, so I set mine to 165 I would recommend resolution scaling to be switched off. With VSync, you should set it off if you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor. If you don't have that function with your monitor, then having VSync on or off is really down to you. If you have it on, it will stop your screen from tearing, but you will have some input latency, which is very low, but could give you a disadvantage against your competition in multiplayer games. Setting it off will remove that input latency, but you might see some screens tearing. If you do set it off, then it is recommended that you cap the frame rate to no higher than 60 FPS as that will help minimize tearing. And of course, make sure you run the game in full screen. Showing FPS is down to you. Motion blur should really be switched off here. It will actually give you close to a 2% boost in FPS. And then finally, I will just leave the FOV values as the default values. Next, we'll go into the graphic settings. Set preset to custom. Anisotropic filtering can be left as high as it has zero impact on your FPS. Now for shadow quality, I'm going to say low. This will give you a massive 27% boost in FPS, followed by switching off night shadows and you'll get another 15% boost. Setting motion blur to low will give you around 6% boost. For both environment texture and geometry quality, I'd go either medium or even high, as you'll definitely want to keep the game quality high to appreciate how beautiful Forza 5 is. SSAA can be set to two times. FXAA can be left as a default setting. SSAO should be either medium or high. Reflection quality, I'd say medium or even low, as that's going to give you nearly a 20% boost to FPS. World car level of detail, I'm going to say either medium or high. Deformable terrain quality has almost no impact, so it can be left at the highest setting. For SSR, I'd say medium. For lens effects, I'd say also medium. Shader quality will give you around a 17% boost if you set it to low, but it might be worth keeping it to medium. Particle effects quality can be left as high or try medium for around an 8% boost. And finally, ray tracing should be set to off, unless of course you have a high-end system. Now of course all these settings really depend on your PC, so it's definitely worth playing around to see what works best for your system. I do really hope this guide helps you in some way or another, and if you do have any questions, please pop them in the comment section and I will respond. Thank you all for watching. See you all soon, a goodbye.